Hello, hello. Welcome to my compact introduction to secular witchcraft, separating practice from religion. Here's me. Uh, I go by the name Solaris in the witchcraft community, and I've been practicing witchcraft for about 15 years, maybe a little bit more. Um, just some background on myself as a um, practitioner of witchcraft. I've always been drawn to magic and witchcraft itself, and I first started practicing officially with Wicca when I was about 15 years old. Um, and as I grew and matured, my practice did as well. Um, I definitely gained a lot of insight and was able to contextualize my witchcraft after traveling through Europe and especially um, living in Argentina. That's really where I began to blossom into secular witchcraft, especially, I'd say. Uh, and a little bit about um, my role in community building within um, the community of witchcraft. I was a co-host of the Witches Roundtable group that was held at a um, one of my local metaphysical stores. It was a monthly meeting that we held and we would present the group with a topic uh, related to witchcraft and just open the floor for discussion. And I am also an admin for the Secular Witchcraft Facebook group. So what is secularism? If we look at the textbook definition, it's denoting attitudes, activities, or other things that have no religious or spiritual basis. If we think about secularism in a legal sense or in um, the governmental sense, it's the separation of church and state. And we can just go ahead and apply that to the practice of witchcraft as well. We can separate the practice of witchcraft itself from religion, which um, can be used alongside the practice or within the practice as well. And before we go any further, having stated that, I think it's also important to um, differentiate between secular and atheist because some people conflate the two and they're certainly not the same thing. You can practice secular witchcraft or you can identify as a secular witch while still believing in a deity or deities. Um, I would say atheist witches are most likely secular witches as well. I would have a hard time understanding how that couldn't be the case. Um, but definitely don't feel like this is um, the same thing as atheist witchcraft. Um, secular witchcraft just means that you're not going to involve religion Therefore, most likely, you're not going to be involving a deity in your practice, um, any form of worship, but that does not mean that you wouldn't necessarily believe in a deity. And along with religion, um, when we think about separating what is religion, it's not just a belief um, or worship in a deity, it's also the rules that can go along with said religion. So, secularism essentially is not bound by a religious creed. It doesn't come with any inherent rules. It is literally just the practice of witchcraft itself. So if we apply secularism to witchcraft, um, here are some aspects that most secular witches can rely on. Like I said, there wouldn't be a use of deities in the practice, and of course there's always exceptions. There are definitely some secular witches out there who would argue that you can use deities um, or other figures as archetypes in your practice, not necessarily invoking or uh, praying or worshiping to a deity in the practice. Um, most people could agree that, that that would not be secular. And also removing any specific rule set um, from your practice. And I'll, I'll touch a little bit on that later to clarify what exactly that might mean in practice. There's definitely a lot of gray areas within secular witchcraft. Um, there's a lot of questions about observation or celebration of holidays and sabbats. That's 
really from what I've seen, uh, kind of divided right down the middle. There's many that would say, no, I associate that with religion. I don't do those and that's totally fine. And then on the flip side of that, there's a lot of secular witches that say, no, I still celebrate the Sabbats. Um, typically when witches say that, they usually um, give the explanation that they still um, observe these holidays as a celebration of the earth um, continuing its, its cycle. Um, casting circles, is also kind of, once again, a split down the middle um, decision for most secular witches and people who practice secular witchcraft. Some will cast circles, some, once again, associate that too much with religion or in a certain rule set and therefore don't do it. Or at the very least, I'd say most witches who practice secular witchcraft would agree that it's it's definitely not required. Um, and then the last one, this one is is where things can get a little hairy. Um, as I stated before, there's there's definitely not a specific rule set within secular witchcraft. Um, at least not a rule set that would go along with any particular religion. So the rule of three or the threefold law or karma, you know, whatever you want to call this principle, is also a definitely a gray area within secular witchcraft. Um, therefore, the use of curses and hexes um, are also thrown into question, and it's it's kind of up in the air, and it, it very much varies from witch to witch, whether or not they would say, yes, it's okay to hex and curse. Um, usually they have some sort of standard as far as when you don't just go doling them out. Um, so it's not to say that there's there's no moral compass involved, um, but basically there's there's definitely a lot of secular witches who would say, um, I don't follow the rule of three, I don't believe in it for one reason or another. And then there's definitely your share of secular witches that still believe that that rule applies, um, not seeing it as a religious, but more as like a, a universal law. So that's, once again, it's definitely a gray area. So if we take a look at secular witchcraft within the larger witchcraft community, um, I just kind of wanted to give some context as far as where this community is, um, in case you haven't really had any experience with any secular witches or the community itself. It's definitely gaining popularity um, as an admin for a secular witchcraft group. It's I've definitely been able to see um, the numbers of uh, member requests just absolutely skyrocket. And I'd say like maybe the past um, like year or so, uh, definitely lower numbers, definitely much a smaller group before. And you might say that that's indicative of um, groups, you know, in, in any sort of social media that yes, as time goes on, they will gain more members. But it's been, I mean, it's been exponential. People are very interested in secular witchcraft. Um, I think uh, there's definitely different reasons for that. Some people come with the feeling of, man, I'm just so tired of this whole, like, um, the, like the Wicca aspect of witchcraft. Some people are, are just really tired of that, um, which is fair. Nothing bad against, against Wicca as a religion. It's absolutely fine. Some people, you know, it's not their cup of tea. It's totally fine. And it's great to find a group or a community where um, the, I don't know, the, the rules and themes of Wicca aren't necessarily going to be so prevalent. Um, it's very open and eclectic. Like I said before, there's really no rules. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no inherent rules. Kind of anything goes to, I mean, a certain extent. Um, in secular witchcraft, you're going to find just an absolute plethora of mixed and matched practices, beliefs, etc. So it can be, I mean, it's absolutely fascinating what you'll find. Um, this also leaves uh, a lot of room open for creativity. Absolutely. Um, and then these last two points are a little kind of, um, you, you might think of them as cons. Um, not they're not necessarily bad like uh, generally it's a solitary practice um 
this kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that it's very eclectic and leaves a lot of room for creativity. Uh, I would say that for most witches, it's kind of hard to find someone who is on your very same wavelength as far as beliefs and ways that you would like to do ritual or practice witchcraft. It's already hard to do that within, for example, Wicca. Um, and then trying to find somebody in secular witchcraft who, um, who you know, your flows match up as far as exactly how you want to do things. It's just really hard, which is why secular witchcraft generally becomes a solitary practice. Um, not to say that you can't practice with other people who don't have the exact same word-for-word -word beliefs as you do. I, as a secular witch, have definitely participated recently in um, Wiccan rituals, um, Wiccan sabbats, and that's totally fine. It just, as you can imagine, it can, it can get a little complicated. Um, and there's also currently, and I'm hoping that this is changing, I'm seeing some change in this, there's a serious lack of, um, secular literature and witchcraft. Um, it's, it's just not quite there yet. We're still very heavy with the Wiccan and Druidic movements from decades past, and those are still the, um, primary literatures that are being put out and also being read. Um, there are definitely examples of secular books out there, and I can um, hopefully maybe leave a list um, somewhere along with this video. Um, they're out there, but they're kind of human number still. So, um, one of the problems that goes along with the lack of secular uh, literature is um, getting all these spells that you may really, really like a spell, um, you know, what it does, what it's all about, um, but you got your deities all up in there, <laughs> so, um, and that's totally fine, um, but maybe you really want to secularize this spell, so this is something that I've gotten very used to, and this, um, is just a, a little example from the Llewellyn Midsummer um, Sabbat book from their series of the Sabbats. Um, I've taken this spell and we're going to secularize it. So when I secularize a spell, I usually pinpoint the source of power in a spell because generally speaking, if I'm wanting to change something, it's because it's tied to a deity. Um, so we find where in the spell this is happening, and we assign a new source, and it could be, um, drawing power on the elements, on herbs, on crystals from directly within yourself. It's, you know, that's really where you can get very, very creative. Um, so let's take a look at this is Thor's Summer Storm spell. Great Thor, God of Thunder, hear me. Great Thor, protector and warrior, hear me. Great Thor, who brings the healing rain, hear me. Let your rain wash down upon me, cleansing and clearing. Let your mighty thunder shake the skies and the ground. Bring positive change into my life. Let the summer storm bring new life and new beginnings, and help me grow strong and tall like the oak. Thor, lend me your power and strength, and bless me with the rains of this summer storm. Okay, so here is what I've done just very quickly to secular secularize <laughs> this spell. Um, as you can see, there's no more deities <laughs> in here, and I've basically switched um, the power source in this spell from a deity to... Um, the the storm itself. I would suppose that you would perform this spell during a summer storm. So we can imagine that there is thunder, lightning, and rain happening, and we're going to use, we're just going to draw on the power of of those natural occurrences themselves from the earth. You could say um, to redirect the power of our spell, and poof, it is secular now. Booming thunder, hear me. Illuminating lightning, hear me. Healing rain, hear me. Summer rain washed down upon me, cleansing and clearing. 
mighty thunder shake the skies and the ground, bringing positive change into my life. Let the summer storm bring me new life and new beginnings, and help me grow strong and tall like the oak. Great cloudburst, lend me your power and strength, and empower me with the rains of this summer storm. Yeah, I had to Google the word cloudburst. <laughs> it's kind of a neat um, uh, synonym for storm. So I really like that. And hey, practicing secular witchcraft might increase your vocabulary. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, that's just kind of a quick little example of, of what I might do to um, make a spell secular. I want to thank you guys so much for um, being here and listening to my little introduction video. Um, you can find me on Facebook and YouTube. I have channels and pages and they will typically just be under uh, the cultural witch. If you search that, you can find me. Maybe I can leave a link somewhere as well. Um, I have an interesting video on my YouTube channel from a couple years ago on my opinion of the rule of three as a secular witch. Um, so if you're still interested in hearing a little bit more about that, feel free to check it out. And um, also feel free to send me a message or contact me if you have any further questions. Thank you.